let's look over this taxonomy of illustration mistakes document, which I made. So it says everyone can draw. Drawing is just simply the ability to make good choices. Below is a taxonomy of newbie mistakes. Observe that all mistakes are the result of bad choices. You can make good choices, can't you? <laughs> now, what I mean by this is every time you make a mark, you have the option to erase that mark, okay? Drawing is simply the ability to make marks and decide whether or not those marks contribute to your piece. Painting is the same way, except in drawing, in drawing, you're making lines, scratches, marks. In painting, it's the same thing, except you are not making marks. You're making, you're adding splotches of color, blobs of color. And it's your ability to decide whether or not this blob of color contributes to the piece. So drawing is just consistently making good choices. Painting is just consistently making good choices. And if you make a bad choice, you have the ability to back up, erase that, paint over it white, and start again. Now, the taxonomy of this document, the taxonomy of mistakes are, I, I have classified two evolutionary categories of mistakes. The first are primary mistakes. And what I mean by that is these are mistakes that you make a bad choice right in the beginning. Okay. And that sort of sets you up for a bad composition in the future. Editing mistakes are a little bit different, okay? Editing mistakes are where you, you don't, you're not seeing the mistake as it happens and you're not stepping back and fixing it or erasing it, okay? So editing mistakes can be fixed. Well, all these mistakes can be fixed very quickly, okay? But if you make a primary mistake early on and you put a lot of work into a project, it's, it might not, it might be unfixable, okay? So let's talk about the primary mistakes first. A first bad decision that people make is to copy something that's already out there. So they'll take a image or a previous illustration that somebody else has made and they try to copy it. One reason that that's a bad idea is because you can imagine it's just like a DNA sequence. And if a DNA sequence receives a mutation, it will pass that mutation on to the next generation. So every time you choose to make a drawing that's based on another drawing, you're replicating the errors that were made in that original drawing. So it's always good. The best choice is always to start at primary material. That means you go out and you take your own photographs and you use your own photographs as source specimens from which to compose your scientific illustration or you actually collect the actual specimen. You go to a museum and you draw straight from an actual animal, straight from an actual specimen that you pull out of a drawer, straight, straight from an actual insect that you have yourself collected, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? That's the better way to do it. Otherwise, you're gonna end up passing on errors that were already put into that. So don't copy. So here's a good example of why not to do this. Um, I have had students in the past, so one student was doing Drosophila, and again, like I can just Google, anybody can just Google Drosophila drawing, right? And there's all kinds of drawings, and you might be tempted to like copy some of these drawings. You really want to avoid that, and it, it, one of the reasons you really want to avoid that, so one student picked, picked this image, and they were trying to like replicate this image, okay? And that student did not notice that this person, this individual, Joanna Carvalho, not my student, this person had drawn the legs, the third, or second pair of legs underneath the wings. So it looked like the fly had just four legs. So when my student, when my student drew this fly, they didn't see that, they didn't, they didn't see that with their eye. And so they drew a fly that had four legs, okay? And so you can see how drawing an image of a drawing, rather than drawing an image of a specimen that you directly have, if you're drawing an image of another drawing, replicating that drawing, you're also replicating the mistakes, or you might make mistakes, like not seeing that this person had drawn that leg underneath. And then you might recreate something that's completely inaccurate and incorrect, 
a fly that has four legs. This is a good example of why not to do this. Now, since we're looking at flies, let's go to the next mistake, which is low resolution. People make a mistake in that they set up their file at a low resolution. They don't realize it. They don't realize that that's a variable that they need to change. And what happens is they make a drawing and they might be satisfied with that drawing. And then when they upload it to some format or get it ready to use, they have something that looks like this. It's very pixelated. It's not sharp. It might be relatively accurate in a decent drawing, but just the simple fact that they did not set up their file correctly has now destroyed their image. It's pixelated and this is gonna look trashy wherever it goes. It's just gonna look too pixelated. That's a problem of not setting up your file at a high pixel resolution. So, right, remember what you do is every time you set up a new file new, you have the option to choose the resolution at which you work at. Make sure you're working at greater than or equal to 300 dots per inch, or you're going to make something that looks like trash. Now, let's move over here into this clade of mistakes, the marking mistakes. So, mistakes that are based on marks. Now, two of these are a family of mistakes and they relate to sort of considering what the purpose of what you're making is. Many, many people, if they're trying to do something extremely realistic, they don't draw enough marks. Now here's actually a really good example of this. I would bet that this person was not trying to make a cartoon. This person was trying to do a legitimate effort to do a real type of, a, a close to the truth uh, illustration. So this was, this person was trying to draw in a realistic manner, whoever made this. Um, and the issue is they just, they haven't put enough effort into it. They haven't put enough marks. And also too, like the marks that they have made are lazy. So like, look at these wings, look at the wings. They're sort of just, they're trying to gesture what the wings are like, but when you understand that the purpose is to be draw something that's realistic, it doesn't look good. Okay, so this is a good example of too few marks. Too few marks. They haven't sort of differentiated the the shape of the abdomen, of the thorax, of the head, of the eyes. There's no curvature. There's no, it's very very flat. They haven't put enough marks. They haven't put enough time into drawing the details. Okay, so a good fix for this, a good fix for this is to draw detail. Now look at this one. This person has, it, it's sort of, it's probably, they're actually probably close to the same artistic skill, but this person, whoever drew this one, this, it looks like a tefritted, um, whoever, or not tefritted, um, it looks like a, a deer fly, tabanid, looks like a tabanid. Whoever has drawn this one, they know how many marks need to be made to make something that looks realistic. See how they've made marks on the sides of the, I think this is the scutellum. They've made marks on the side to gesture the, the, the shape and the structure and the curvature, same with the eyes. And here they've drawn the wing venation. They've spent time to actually draw the wing venation accurately rather than just sort of trying to gesture in a nonsensical way. They've, they've taken time to draw the individual separations of, of the tarsi of the, on the feet, on the legs, whereas here they've just sort of gestured. So again, it relates to your purpose. But what I'm trying to say with this mistake is in realism, if you're trying to be realistic, you must spend the time putting the marks in and drawing the details properly. Otherwise, you're going to end up with something like this. Now the opposite mistake is in making cartoons, in making real true illustrations, illustration cartoons, people have a tendency to make too many marks. They're trying to do it in an accurate way when the reality of cartoons is cartoons are not accurate. They're abstractions of the essence. They're extractions of the essence and abstractions of the essence. So to make good cartoons, let me try to find an example of this. Here's a good example. Look at these. These are just stunning cartoons of insects. And they're so simple. They're so incredibly simple. And yet they're, they're beautiful. They're quite beautiful. And they're so simple. 
they're not drawing too many lines. And so a big common newbie mistake is not realizing the purpose. Are you trying to make something that's realistic? or are you trying to make a cartoon? And if you're trying to make a cartoon, you must force yourself to not do something like this, to not do that, you must force yourself to abstract the essence. And just draw and focus on the essence. So what is the essence of a mosquito? Six legs, wings, and a needle. That is the essence of a mosquito, okay? So do you see how, how good of an essence? That is, what is the essence of a spider? A fat belly, Four, eight legs, eight legs, and mouth parts that can bite you. That's the essence of a spider. I mean, maybe they would, have, maybe they could have added in some, um, some silk webbings or something like that. That would also contribute to the essence. But that's what you need to start thinking about if your goal is to make an illustration or a cartoon. Is what is the essence? How can I extract and abstract that essence and emphasize that? rather than emphasizing the actual lines or the shape of the creature. Okay, we talked about this mistake in a previous video, drawing with a blurry brush. So what, what will happen is people will get ready to draw, they'll have their brush, and they'll accidentally have the default setting, which is the blurry brush, and then they'll try to draw something. And so imagine if, now imagine if they try to draw this, this Thing that looks like this it already it already looks just horrible and the reason it looks horrible is because you're drawing with a blurry brush don't do that when you're drawing draw with a sharp brush now let's go back to those drosophila to talk about this next mistake next mistake is there's a line diameter inconsistency okay now what i mean by this is when you're drawing, it always looks better to have lines that are the same diameter, okay? So look at here, look at this drawing. All these lines are drawn with the same fine pen. They're all drawn with the same diameter. And this contributes to the piece because it makes it look like everything is from the same universe. Everything is constructed in the same universe, okay? Now this fly, this fly is making the mistake that I've pointed out here, line diameter inconsistency. The hairs and the, and the body and the legs up here and the eye and the wing, all these are different line diameters. And so this does not work here because it makes everything seem like it's not a whole. It makes everything seem like each of these individual disparate pieces are coming from a separate universe and it disrupts the consistency of the piece. Whereas if you were to look at the, the insect cartoons, which I described as very successful, there's a superb line consistency here, okay? The only things that are smaller are maybe, maybe some of these mouthpieces and the antennae. And I would actually, I would have actually changed this. I think this would be better if they made the, the needle of the mosquito the same thickness as the legs. But visually, these look much better as cartoons because their consistency of the lines is so much better. Whereas this one, it's everywhere. There's, it's, it's not, it doesn't look good. Now let's talk about some of these color mistakes. So we're out of the marks and we're now into the color clade, the color clade of mistakes. Really most of these mistakes are made based on the fact that people don't understand that they get to choose their own color, okay? To an extent, I mean, in scientific illustration, many times we do wanna capture the actual color, but consider this, consider that every light that you shine on that object is gonna change the actual color that it is. If you were putting that object under a blue light or a fluorescent light or outside light or at night, you're gonna have completely different color patterns. So in many ways, we have lots of sort of freedom to choose the color to an extent that we are using. And this relates to scientific illustration, but it also relates to just making figures in general making figures in general where you're not necessarily illustrating, say like a flower or something like that. But if you're using data, you're making graphs or you are making a color scheme for a particular figure of a paper, you have the choice to choose that color. And the first biggest mistake that people make is they think that there's no pattern to color. They think there's no, they think there's no rules about color. Okay. Rule is, or color is just like 
keys on a piano, where if you're going to play certain keys on the piano, sometimes it's going to sound real bad because you haven't picked the right keys and you haven't picked the actual right key. You haven't picked the right scale, like the minor scale or the C major scale, etc. You haven't picked the right keys that fit in the right uh, musical assembly. Okay, colors the same way. And I would encourage you, you guys have the choice to choose whichever colors you want. So you can always go to Google and you can Google color schemes and find a color scheme that looks good and choose and limit yourself to those colors that you know will look good together. This is the most important thing if you're making data images and those data images involve colors like with graphs, for example. So choose a nice color palette. Okay, another mistake that people make is they don't understand that color has contrast. So people, people kind of naturally know that blacks and whites are, are contrasting colors, but people don't understand that actually there is a color wheel. And let me just show you, color wheel. There is a color wheel and the colors that are opposites in the color wheel. So here, let's look on this one. Oh, it's not gonna make it big for me. So for example, let's just look at this one. Um, purple is opposite of yellow. That means if you put these two together, they're gonna have the highest contrast. So if you need something to pop out, you can put a purple right next to a yellow and that will create a situation where something pops, okay? Or if you want something to sort of be right next to the object in space, then you might choose colors that are right next to each other like red, and orange, okay? So by choosing sort of opposites, you're gonna get gigantic contrast and you can use contrast to push and pull the deepness of an image, the, how much things pop and how much things fall back in the three-dimensional space on a 2D plane, okay? So by choosing colors and you get to pick, you can emphasize contrast or take away contrast. So the big common mistake is that people don't realize that by picking a color, they're creating these situations where they have sway too much contrast or too little contrast, okay? So people, that's a mis very common mistake that people make. So these are all the mistakes that sort of, you can be fixed by just having a better understanding of, of, of this knowledge. Just knowing that these mistakes can be made, you can immediately start planning out your image in a way where you're never gonna make a sort of a primary mistake. So let's go to these editing mistakes now. Now let's start by looking at these, these master images. We've seen these before. This is just Googling or Pinterest searching scientific illustration. Look at what all these pieces have in common. They all have properly positioned the object that they're illustrating to take up the full page, to utilize the full space. And where there's negative space, negative space means where there's like an empty void. It's either balancing out, like in this case, the negative space is actually balancing out the, 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 um, the illustration that they have there in a way that makes it look visually appealing. It feels even in a sense. And in cases where it might be a little bit too much negative space, like here, they've added in some other elements like little eggs or larvae or pupae. And so all these illustrators have taken into consideration the entire piece of paper on which they're illustrating. That is one of the most common mistakes that people make is they have a blank piece of paper and they think it's gonna just look good to draw an object right here in the middle, not realizing that the entire rest of this space is filled with white page, which sometimes might look good, but usually if you don't think about it, if you don't think about how to treat the negative space, it looks usually pretty bad. Now, most of these mistakes can all be fixed with setting up a layer and doing a, a simple sketch. So you can imagine if you're gonna, you, you plan this out visually beforehand, you're gonna put your butterfly over here and over here, you're gonna put like the leaf that it lands on. And this is pretty even, it's pretty symmetrical, but maybe you'll put, maybe you'll put a couple elements here and then to balance it out, maybe you'll put like a couple elements here. Like you need to plan out your space so that it's used properly and used to the point where it looks good. Now, the other way to do this is the sketch is gonna allow you to position things properly. So if you're gonna do an illustration of say, say that same butterfly, 
but your piece looked different, you might decide to position your butterfly in a different way. Maybe you're gonna position your butterfly right here because maybe you have, maybe your focus is on this little branch that it's on or something like that. So you have to really consider the full entirety of your piece and plan out the elements that are gonna be in there beforehand. So many of these mistakes, these don't get these these mistakes of bad composition are caused because people didn't make a sketch. And these mistakes include not using the whole space. Suboptimal positioning means they're they're positioning legs in a very very weird way. Let me give you an example of this. So here's a good example of that. This is the projects from Project Two um, that the students made last year. In general, these, these um, illustrations are extremely good. In general, everybody just had a really significant improvements. But let me just point out the mistakes that I was making where here you actually have, these are the same species um, of grasshopper. They're, they're exactly the same type of grasshopper. So see here, you can actually see what I was talking about earlier where people have chosen their color palettes. Um, and this student was more mimicking a photograph that they had had, and this student was more taking some real creative uh, liberty with their project. And which one looks better? This one looks a lot better. This one has a proportion correct. This one has better color. This one, there's a lot of problems with it. Um, the proportions are way off. The legs look funny. The antennae don't look right. The front legs don't look right. Um, and these are, this is a great example of a student who, who they did, he didn't really consider beforehand doing a sketch, doing a sketch, getting the proportions right, and also the positioning. The positioning of, he wouldn't necessarily, he doesn't necessarily have to put this leg here. He doesn't have to position this leg in that way. But this was a mistake of, again, choosing to copy from another piece where in the context of that piece, there was a picture of this creature on a leaf and so the leaf was actually covering up some parts of these legs and it was sitting on this leaf in a way that made it look like this but when you extract it away from that now it doesn't it doesn't look that great so you can see here two examples where students have chosen the same type of creature um and and one succeeded much more than another student though all these all these are pretty good so use the whole space, consider the position, how you're positioning things. Don't draw too small and make sure your proportions are correct. These can all be fixed by just simply doing a sketch. Okay, let me talk about this last mistake, elements from other planets. And this is a criticism I often find in scientific papers um, and in illustrations, both. When you are gonna do a paper, you should decide on a color scheme and you should decide on sort of a way in which you are going to present data and images for the entirety of that paper. Okay, so you should create complete consistency. So what you would, what you, an example of this, here's actually an example of this. Cartoons are actually a great example of this. All these elements, even though they're completely different, there's an elephant, there's a peppermint, uh, there's a cinnamon roll, there's a lemon drop, there's a lumpy spades princess. All these elements are completely different and yet you know they're all from the same universe. You know they all live in the same world and the reason they live in the same world is because they're all drawn with the same technique. They're all colored with exactly the same technique. So what people don't realize is this sort of rule actually also applies to the quality of sort of scientific illustrations and the quality of figures that are in a paper. And this is why it's always a bad idea to use clip art and taking things from online. Because when you take things from online, you take clip art, for example, to put into your illustrations or to put in your figures, every one of these things is drawn by a different artist that has a completely different style, that has a completely different technique in which they make art. And so if you were to take a bunch of these different elements and assemble them together in a figure for a paper, it would look extremely terrible. And that would be because all these elements are coming from completely different universes and there would be no consistency. So I really encourage people, don't make that mistake. Whenever you do a paper or a piece of data or an illustration, make sure all the elements that you're including into that piece come from the same universe. And the one way to ensure this is by you making all those elements in the exact same style. This, this actually, this document right here that we're looking at, is a very good example of this. Rather than copy pasting a color scheme or copy pasting a color wheel, 
I drew my own such that the consistency of this would all look exactly the same. All these pieces come from the same universe, if that makes sense. And that's why it's so pleasing to look at. Now, don't make mistakes. 